I was 13 years old and I was at yeah. Berkeley College of Music. <laughs> so um, I found out about this about four hours ago and I'm going to read lyrics off of my phone. And this is the only song we both kind of know. So Woo! I'm giving you a PSA. Yeah. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Sorry, I just want to. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Give it up for Aiden Watson. That's uh, it sounded great on the Fender Stratocaster. All right, so we have Jason King on deck, Ruby, Hell, and the whole. Let's get the hilarious Alexis Ramirez up, everybody. Yeah. Give it up, give it up for Alexis Ramirez. Yeah. Woo. I uh, dude, I love this mic. I miss Woo. the fucking violence, which I'm really upset about. Really wish I could have been here for some violence. Uh, 
I was at work. I was at work. I had to do sexual harass. I I bartend, okay? I had to do sexual harassment training because um, I don't have I have boundary issues. No, uh, it wasn't because of me, but I had to do it. And during the sexual harassment training, it had like a quiz part, and it was like. Ashley was born as a woman and identifies as a woman. What is Ashley? And I was like, what's the pronouns got to do with the side work? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but sexual harassment in the workplace. Let's talk about it. Is it just comics? Did all the artists leave? <laughs> yes, uh, the artists. Uh, I don't know. It's weird, right? Comedians, businessmen, uh, I think honestly just people, like, if you don't touch each other, you don't respect each other, right? Handshake, fist bump. <laughs> Where's my hug? Fuck you. Get away from me. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I get it. I, I want respect. I want to, I want to show you guys that I respect you. Uh, but I think autistic people are light years ahead of us. I think they figured out a couple things. Absolutely no touching. Let's let's all let's all hop on that train, okay? Uh, let's see. What else have they? <laughs> no. Uh, what do, eye contact? Why are we? What's what's that about? Why is that? Um, eye contact is for only two people. It's for your mother and anyone who's... See, uh, fuck. You try to change the words. You can't change the words. Just keep them the same. Your mother? <laughs> or people who have seen your cum face. That's the end of my list. That's why I do this joke every time. It doesn't really need work, but I just... I can't tell who wants to fuck me and who's just like you know, normal and can make eye contact. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, uh, I don't know, have you ever been like, have you ever been jealous because you feel like someone is like living your dream? Yeah, I, I feel jealous of my best friend because she got hit by a drunk driver last year. She doesn't have to worry about hopes and dreams anymore. <laughs> She just gets to be like a 45-year-old Christian, just automatically. She woke up and she's just like, yeah, God, he's real. Um, and uh, you better not curse. No cursing in this house. Bless this house. And my brain, will he fix it? We don't know. So yeah, she got hit by a car a year ago. That's the sound it made. <laughs> no, um, you know, she was actually altered forever. Uh, and uh, no, it's fun though, because uh, now she like says really funny shit, just like all the time. Like she has a crush on my roommate right now and she texted me and she was like, hey, no big deal, but have you seen David's dick? <laughs> no big deal. Uh, that's just so funny to me. She's just like a horny Christian middle-aged woman now. Uh, she says like, uh, what else does she say? Uh, she is a supporter of Palestine, so I think that's the brain damage. No, she was, just, I don't know. Uh, the last time I came here, I talked about the Jews, and, uh, and I just felt like, uh, I don't know. I talked about them last time, so I literally, I can't, I already mentioned them, but. It's my favorite thing. I just, <laughs> I just love them. Um, I did the sexual harassment thing. That was, uh, that was something uh, fun. Someone, uh, the guy that with the baby told me I look smart. Guys, I was valedictorian of my high school, and uh, isn't that insane? That's insane. I did so much acid that this is the smartest I will probably ever. Yes, fucking thank you, Matt. Woo! Awesome. Woo! Give it up for Alexis, the valedictorian yeah. of the open mic, everyone.
we'll have to do a valedictory address maybe next week. And give it up one more time for Alexis Ramirez. All right. Ruby Hell on deck, Danny Fallon on the whole studio here, and Ben Callen. Can we get the amazing king of comedy, everyone? Give it up for Jason King! These late night sets are hilarious. Get ready for funny shit. Hey, comics, give it up for yourselves. <laughs> Hell yeah, alright, cool. It's morning comics. Alright, fuck yeah, alright, cool, yeah. You know, here's the thing about. Uh, I feel like sexual harassment training is like is like a porno without the fun. You know? Because like it's, it's just a bunch of hot people that can't act. The only difference is that the girl doesn't take the promotion. That's, that's the only thing that's different. You know? and, and, and I don't know, it's like it's like very hot, like you know, like it will be getting hot, I'll be watching sexual harassment video all jacking off. And, and then right before it gets good, I get I get cock blocked by a questionnaire. So what what should Cindy do? Tell her boss? Tell HR, how about suck the cock? Come on, buddy. <laughs> do you guys know about this Aristotle quote? Um, the ideal marriage is between a guy who's 18 and a, a woman who's 37 or a little less in years. It's actually it's actually a misquote. The actual quote is that the ideal marriage age for women is 18 and the ideal marriage age for men is 37 or a little less. And then Aristotle did this. <laughs> Do with that information what you will. <laughs> Aristotle just says the facts. Y'all can make the implications. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Let's see. All right. You know what? This is a new material room. That's what's going to happen. And we're going to see what the fuck. They're going to see if this shit works. Is Halloween's coming up. I don't like. I don't like Halloween because white people are racist on Halloween. You know? They'll be like, "What are you, Eddie Murphy?" I'm like, "I'm wearing a Superman costume." <laughs> I weird one that I don't like Halloween nowadays because it's hard to tell what's a costume and what's someone's identity. <laughs> you know? Like I was talking to this girl, she's like, I'm a witch. I'm like, okay, where are you, where are you wearing that outfit to? She's like, a job interview. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> she got the job. They were lacking in diversity. Apparently, they had too many elves and orcs. So. <laughs> <laughs> I am... Um, uh, there was a girl I was talking, one of my girlfriends, she was talking to me, she's like, it's, uh, it's harder, it's easier for men to date because they can, like, date at more ages, you know? Claire, you're the only girl in the road, do you agree? <sighs> I mean, this is a man's world, Jason. Okay. You agree. Yeah. That's, what That's what they say. But yeah, no, it's, it's your opinion. Your opinion is the law, all right? Outside their own age, exactly. Nobody? Okay. <laughs> this joke has to totally change now. <laughs> but I don't know, this is, that's, what, that's what she told me. And here's the thing. And I feel like a lot of women say this. And I feel like, I feel like that's half on y'all. Just, just like stop eight dating older dudes. You know, I feel like, I feel like if, women, if women who were 26 stopped dating men who were 65, Old dudes would stop spiking their hair and buying convertibles. <laughs> and my grandma could stop asking me to hang out. <laughs> yeah. I feel like women in their like early twenties should stop dating guys who are the age, like any age above like how old am I? Like twenty eight. Don't, <laughs> don't go above twenty eight. You know, like you should, you should like look at a guy's ID. Be like, how old are you? Forty two. All right, that only qualifies you for thirty eight and above. If you don't know where to find them, she's probably wearing a ponytail and like running sneakers with a cream peacoat. That's what 38 year old women wear. Oh, <laughs> you know. Are you 52? Okay, only qualifies you for women who are 46 and above. She's probably speed walking and she's wearing a sun visor. <laughs> you know, shouldn't do that. And and a lot of my a lot of my older women friends, they're always I don't know like I have a lot of friends who are like in their late 30s like women. And they, they, have, they have to do so much shit, you know? They got like nine creams to put on, they got to 
personal training, they, they like rub a rock <laughs> on the bottom of their chin. Why don't they just like, the next time they see like a young woman on a date with an older guy, just fucking, just choke her. <laughs> no, like, you know, like, the next time you see one of those incompatible conversations that they have like, with the older dude and the young one, it's like, yeah, I don't know where to move my 401k. It's like, 401,000 just choke that bit. Just choke that. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Do it, man. Yeah, that's how you. It would be if if women who were 23 just dated the broke, pimply losers that were their age. They wouldn't be in a crisis when they're 32. That's all I'm saying. All right. <laughs> all right anyway, let's say I'll do this one more thing. I'll do this. I um. I was we were we were moving from a house party to a club. Uh, this weekend, and my girl, one of my homegirls, she, uh, <laughs> I'm having trouble with this girl, girlfriend thing. My, my homegirl, she like, she had a fuckboy with her, and she, he didn't want to come to the club, so she like left him in her bed, right? And so we go to the club, we're like dancing, we're having a good time, we're going all out. I take my glasses off, you know? And, because that's what you do when you go out, you take your glasses off. And I, um, at some point she meets a, a guy and they start making out and they're about to go home. So I go up to the guy and I'm like, hey man, I gotta tell you this, there's another dude in her bed. <laughs> All right, speedy, yeah, I'm, I'm looking out. He's like, he's like whacking shit, but you know, it's like go to your place, All right? And he, he, at this point he takes off his hat and he goes, that's me. And I'm like, what? And he's like, that's me. And I'm freaking out because like, I've been like shit talking this guy to his own face <laughs> for like three minutes straight. <laughs> so I like, and I've been like doing it in the club, right? So I've been yelling. I'm like, yeah, bro, we got no dick. And he's bawling, top of his head looks like the Gulf of Mexico, dog. It's crazy. And he goes, nah, bro, that's me. And I put on my glasses again. So I'm like, oh. Oh no. <laughs> Jason, you fucked up this time for real, dude. You fucked up. Why'd you have to do the Gulf of Mexico shit? Alright, I, I don't have enough time to finish this joke, but thank you very much, Pete. Thank you. Give it up for the great Jason King. We love having him come out for these late night jam sessions. It's great. All right, so we have Danny Fallon on deck, Sir Yadir in the hole, and Ben Callen. Can we get Ruby Hell? Ben, 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 I'm sorry, what your name? Glenner? Glenner. Okay, Glenner. Okay. Let's get Ruby Hell up. Yeah, Ruby Hell. Cut it, if we can cut it to four minutes. we got to be out of here <laughs> around one by one. We're supposed to be out by one, so... Try and keep it concise. Get out of here soon.
for Ruby Hell. It sounded great. All right, so we have Surya here, we have Ben Callahan, we have Tiz and Ben Galinder. Can we get Danny Fallon up, the hilarious Danny yeah. Fallon? Yeah. Yes. Woo. Yes. Good to be here, huh? Yeah. yeah. Good to be alive. Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. My brother, my older brother, he was uh, reading a book. The title of the book was Don't Take Your Life Seriously, which I heard a little different. I heard it like, don't take your life seriously. <laughs> seriously, don't take your life. Everyone would be so sad. Oh my God, please don't take your life. That would be so sad. That would not be cool. Mom would be really upset. You took your life. I think you shouldn't take your life. That's what I think. I think that I'm not going to take my life. Um, yeah. Because what if reincarnation is real? You know? Then you're just back. Like, oh crap, I hate when this happens. I hate when I kill myself and come back and have to learn all the same lessons again. I hate when this keeps happening. I think I've been here before. I think I'm an old soul. I think I've met my one true love in the. I think that's why I'm not happy, right? I think I met my one true love in the medieval ages. I haven't been happy since. Even when I came back in the '80s as a rock star and did all that heroin and fuck sixteen-year-olds. Because remember that was cool. Remember that was okay. <laughs> Steven Tyler, lead singer of Aerosmith, he got custody of a 16-year-old so he could do drugs with her and fuck her. And people are like, yeah, he's a pretty good guy. <laughs> I mean, he wrote Dream On, you know. A lot of good, uh, you know, a lot of problematic artists, I've realized. Like, I love Kanye West, Louis C.K., and Michael Jackson. <laughs> I guess, here's the thing, right? Some of these pedophiles don't even have the decency to make good art. <laughs> I, I can separate the art from the artist. I, um, I don't know, I've been thinking a lot about reincarnation, you know? Like the other day I saw a black midget. I hope that's not his only life. You know, not saying that's a bad life, but it's a weird one to, that's your only one. Hope, hope he comes back as a tall Asian guy. <laughs> Just so he can have the full range, full spectrum. I was talking to my, uh, my dad texted me earlier. He, uh, some of you guys know about my lore. <laughs> some of you are familiar with some of my lore that I've spoken here. Many of you know that my father struck me in the face while teaching me how to drive a vehicle. <laughs> And if you don't, now you know. Because I said that sentence. <laughs> that's, how, that's how speaking works. My dad texted me earlier about that. And he was making a joke. Dads are interesting, you know? Sometimes I don't want to talk to my dad. Because I'll be in a good mood. You know? I don't want to ruin it. Save for later. But, uh, you know, recently I was masturbating. And uh, I looked at the cum afterwards. I was like, hmm. Sad to think that this might not want to answer my phone call someday. <laughs> so, what else is going on? I uh, was doing a game of liberal chicken with a coworker the other day. You know, he said, uh, he was talking about something. He said, I posted on my, one of my Facebook pages, is Britney Spears R slurred? I said, what is R slur? He's like, it's like the R slur with ED at the end. I was like, dude, I said Tucker Carlson is low-key kind of based earlier. <laughs> You're good to say retarded, bro. <laughs> I think I realized, like, uh, I, you know, I'll say retarded here. I just did. <laughs> but I won't say the N-word. And the reason is because... Um, I, uh, I'm not really worried about, 
I'm not looking for the approval of retarded people. You know, I'm not really... I interviewed at a retarded clubhouse earlier this year, and they love me. So, also not jealous of the way they speak. You know? So, yeah, I'm going to say it. I don't know. You, this is weird. It's a weird thing about slurs and stuff. Um, I worked with this guy, awful conversation the other day. Because I can barely understand because he speaks like, I don't know what language he speaks, but it doesn't matter anyhow because I can tell in even the language he speaks that what he's saying is not interesting. <laughs> and he was like, you're a comedian, I'm going to tell you a joke. And he tells me a joke and it's weird because I could clearly hear him saying faggot like seven times. It's weird how that gets through the language barrier. You know? And he was referring to a gay man, but you could tell, like he didn't know. He didn't know that was wrong. <laughs> The way he was saying with so much confidence, that was just the word he uses in his language for gay people. <laughs> Anyhow, have a good night, whatever. Woo! Yeah! yeah. Woo. We love having Danny Fallon. Intelligent, smart, hot takes. We love it. Give it up for Danny Fallon. Yeah. Right, so we have Tiz is on deck. Tiz is on deck. Ben Lerner's coming up. Ben Callan. Let's get Surya Deer up. Give it up for Surya Deer. Yeah. The Warriors. The Warriors. <laughs> Yeah, keep it going for Matt, everyone. Keep it going. Keep it going for my opener, Danny Fallon. Oh, yeah! Yes. I taught you well, my boy. Um, guys, I, I, uh, I, I have a Venmo handle. My Venmo is Surya V Deer. A lot of people ask me, what does the V stand for? I tell them the V in Surya V Deer is my middle initial. And my full name is Surya Venmo Deer. That's a little joke. It's a beautiful Indian name, and I got it from my granddad. Venmo in Hindi means Mahatma Gandhi. That's my granddad. No, my middle name is Van, which is peculiar for an Indian guy. People ask me what that's about, uh, and I tell them the real reason. Uh, my dad was a huge fan of the actor Jean-Claude Van Damme, so that he decided me to name he decided to name me after him, but not even like the whole way. He just decided to name me after 30% of Jean-Claude Van Damme's full name, which is stupid, which is dumb. That would be like if my dad was a fan of Robert De Niro and was just like, hey, new baby, Surya De Deer, Surya. I'm so glad. I am, part of me is glad that like Jean-Claude Van Damme is my dad's favorite actor. I feel like... Because my dad's like second favorite actor, uh, his name's Robert Cum Diarrhea Johnson. <laughs> and I'd hate to have a name like Surya Cum Diarrhea Deer. That would suck. <laughs> it doesn't even make sense. Van is a proposition and like it means from. So my name is Surya from Deer. It's fucking stupid. Yeah, my name sucks. It's uh Half the time people think it's Syria, which I don't know if anyone here keeps up with the news, but Syria is the uh, name of a third world war-torn country, so it makes it pretty hard to have sex with people. Because the only person who wants to fuck Syria is the Obama administration, uh, am I right? <laughs> Are we cool here? <laughs> Clearly not. <laughs> A lot of times people think I'm a girl when they read my name. I remember I was like in school, and I was getting my picture taken, all the kids were. And then like when it was my turn, the photographer says, All right, Surya dear, love, come on up, princess. <laughs> and then when I walked up to get my picture taken, he just went, Shit, I thought you were a girl. I was like, what do you mean by shit? Like, uh, why are you disappointed that I'm not a little girl? I'll still suck your dick. <laughs> And I did, and I had the prettiest picture of everyone. And they, um, I went. Uh, I, I went to high school. I, I went. To, I was in high school. I graduated. I went to a pretty whack high school. A lot. I, I know a lot of kids who went to like cool high schools where they're they're like alumni or like senators. 
and like I don't know politicians. My most famous, the most famous alumnus from my high school was Steve O from Jackass. Are we familiar with Steve O? Yeah. Yeah, dude, he was an alum. He he actually came and visited one year. Like I was in the tenth grade, and he came and visited, and I got to take a picture with Steve O. And as we were taking like the picture, I remember Steve O. He was standing next to me. He looked to his left, and he said, "Hey," to me. He was just like, "Hey." Where did you turn 11? <laughs> and I was just like, oh, uh, I turned 11 in 2010, Steve-O. And then he just goes, oh, I think that was the year they shot Gaddafi. <laughs> spooky. <laughs> I was like, I don't, how is that spooky? That's not, I looked it up later, the Gaddafi wasn't even shot then. And Gaddafi was stabbed, so I... Dude, I like to think that was like Steve-O's one like go-to fun fact, and he's only like a third right. He's only. Um, uh, hey, this is a Beatles-themed nice. thing, right? Woo! Yeah, I, I lived in the UK for like three years, and I actually lived around the corner from Abbey Road Studios. Fun fact. Yeah. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, that was a recording studio uh, where the Beatles stole all their songs from Little Richard and other iconic musicians. Yeah. <laughs> I'll say it. <laughs> uh, no, dude, but like, I, I'd have to like cross uh, the Abbey Road, uh, the Abbey Road, like pedestrian crossing every time they wanted to go to school, and every. Every day there'd just be like tourists like faking, like replicating that iconic like Beatles cross. So, ne so now like any time I fucking like listen to a Beatles song, all I can do is associate it with like Chinese dudes stopping traffic. That's, <laughs> and that's why I hate them. Uh, all right. No, I mean the Beatles. And they're Chinese yeah, fans. That's right. <laughs> bye bye. That's right. It's fuck the, fuck the Beatles night. It's, it's hating on the Beatles night. No one, no one did the theme. It doesn't matter. All right. We have been Glender, Up Deck. We have been Kelly on the whole. Let's get Tiz up. Let's get Tiz up. Four minutes. We're going the lightning round. We gotta get out of here. So we're moving fast. Give it up for Tiz. Yes. I'm just gonna do a couple jokes, man. Woo. Uh, yeah. Ah, uh, do it. The letter A is my favorite letter in alphabet because it's not only a letter, but it's a sound telling you that there's way more letters. Okay? <laughs> we got B, C, and D in the back over here. All right. Been trying to get, I don't know, I, I lost this book on attention, on, on attachment. I lost this book on attachment and just learned to let it go. All right. That's how that joke goes. If you ask me the number one card game, I would say Uno. That's how that joke goes. Yeah. Some people would say that was genius. <laughs> Some people would say that is genius. I'm, I'm no Albert Einstein, but I have attractive cousins. <laughs> um, I never met a CIA agent, or have I? I'm working on a, a short story, it's Little Red Riding Hood, set in a universe where she has glasses. It's called That's a Wolf. Alright, right. I'm gonna give the time back and I'm gonna go back to New Jersey. Alright, you guys are Give it up for Tiz, those were great jokes. The you know joke is a real great joke. Give it up for Tiz. Thank you for coming out. You know, it's been quite a night. Can we get Ben Gl Gl Glintner up? Give it up for Ben Glintner, everybody. All right, All right, everybody. I don't know who is here. I'm very drunken. Woo! I've been developing my jokes for the past since January and they're perfect and every syllable is in its right place but I'm not going to say it tonight. Uh, I hope there aren't any black people here tonight, man. I can't see right now because look, I'm not going to say my, my jokes but I'm just going to say the n-word a whole lot of times right now because I mean, that's the only thing I can do right 
do to, to end this night? It's my birthday, by the way. Well, it was, it was last night. So, I hope there aren't any black people. If there are black people, I hope you know that I have spent my actual real life serving the black community. Like, um, like in real life, I, I actually serve the black community, and I love black people. But I'm gonna, the only way to end this night is to say the end with a whole lot of times. So I'm just going to say it right now a whole lot of times. If there's anyone that's offended by this, please leave, like, right now. I'll give you five seconds to leave right now, and then I'm going to just keep saying the black, that, that word that I'm not supposed to say a whole lot of time. Okay. Yeah, I can't see. I, can't, I really can't see. I'm drunk. I'm very drunk right now. I hope uh, all right, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. You, you, you got in time? If I get punched in the face, it's okay. Because I'm very drunken right now. No, I'm gonna do it. Why not? I've waited all night to, 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 to deliver this material that I've been developing for, for, for since January, and it's now October, and it's my birthday. Not that I want to say this, I really don't want to say this, but it's the only way to, to, to do it right now, and I can't see the lights are in my eyes right now. Jason King's in the, it was in the building, and I hope he's gone right now, and, I, and nothing but respect to, the, to, to that guy right now. I don't, I, I can't keep track of all the black people I've seen tonight. There have been some, a couple of rappers tonight that, that, I, that I thought were, were very nice, they're very, very good, and I like rap. <laughs> I'm gonna say the N word a whole lot of times right now. God bless the bartender who charged me. Like I paid like sixty dollars in old fashions right now, but I'm gonna say the N word a whole lot of times right now. I can't see who's here right now, but I'm gonna say it a lot of times. All right, here we go. Black people, please leave right now. I love black people. I really do. I love black people. Please leave. If you're black and you're here right now, I can't see you. Please leave right now. Okay, five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Nigger, nigger, nigger. Oh, all right, all right, that's enough, that's enough. Thank you, thank you. That's wonderful. That's good. It's not, we don't, I mean, that's, come on. Sorry. All right, what a night. Let's get Big Callahan up. Give it up for Big Callahan, everybody. The hilarious, hilarious, hilarious Big Callahan. That guy stole my act. What's up? No, sorry. Okay. <laughs> that was more tense than the Hamas hostage situation. I was really... Uh, let's hope it doesn't end like that over in the Gaza Strip. That was quite a <laughs> performance. Oh, my God. Anyway, so uh, we, we know the news. It's terrible. Uh, I was thinking, like, I was reading uh, all the international diplomacy statements, uh, you know, because of the war. And I realized I would be the worst leader because I would get all the words confused, you know what I mean? I'd be like, we do not condemn, or is it condone? We do not condone, or we do condone. No, we, don't. we do not condone the condemn. We don't like it. We don't like it, okay? I quit. I quit as leader. That would be, this is my impersonation of a chill king. <laughs> Ready? Oh, no, no, please. Call me your highness. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, we're, we're dealing in difficult circumstances up here. Dude, you know, this, this whole thing happened, and I read this article that the United States is moving ships. The U.S. loves to move ships, you know, when, when something happens. And there's always a bunch of Americans that get a giant boner. When the ships are moved, okay, I don't know what that even meant. I'm frazzled from what we, you know, <laughs> as just as everyone is. <laughs> anyway, I, I um, I was having sex in my fan in my fantasies, in my fantasies. Yeah. and I, I just realized I'm not good, man. I don't, I, you know, I improv. I, I don't have like a set structured um, moves. Like you know, you play Mortal Kombat, you have like a move set. I don't, ha I don't know what I'm doing. I'm, I think of it like I'm Jackson Pollock. You know, the pain or just kind of. She's like, what are you doing? I'm like, hey, let, this is abstract expressionalism. Okay, don't, don't, don't question this. This is, I say I'm Jackson Pollock, she'll probably say I'm a Hermanish Botch. <laughs> <laughs> Did I pronounce it even close to correct? I thought, yeah, okay. Uh, 
anything was better than that. I'm killing with my painter material. Uh, anyway, so the leader thing. Anyway, oh, oh, you ever have this happen to you? I was walking around my neighborhood and there was a, there was a kid with his mom and um, made up a story. I did something for him and he, and the mom said, Jimmy, what do you say? Say, say thank you. Don't make me part of the life lesson of the kid. Are, am I getting paid for this? Do, do I have to wait for this? Or can I go about my business? Are there any Asian people here? I'm good. That guy waited till 1 a.m. to do that. I mean, let's give him a pass. No, that's terrible. That was very interesting uh, performance art, I guess. That's um, crazy, but uh, anyway, I have an anger problem. You know, and uh, but I don't, I don't have the physique. I don't have the physique to be able to have one. You know. I don't. Yeah, you get it. You've been, you've been beaten for, for comments. Uh, that guy left smartly, by the way, in the middle of my set. He slipped out when I was talking about the warships. But uh, anyway, so I don't have the physique. If I was built, I would. You would know if I was angry. I'd be throwing chairs. I'd be like martyr. Hashtag uh, martyr. <laughs> you can see it in the tape. But uh, anyway, no. I'd, but you know, this is how you know I'm angry now with my physique. I just. You know what I mean? The tap of the leg. That's <laughs> that means I want to kill you. That's a sign for. That's the tap of the leg. And then I jerk off and everything's good, and I'm, I'm balanced. All right, um, what else we got? I guess I gotta cancel those Wagner tickets, huh? <laughs> After what we've seen, this is terrible, horrible. Um, anyway, I'll just, I, yeah, I, I think I had a bunch of stuff on the global crisis, but it, it's not really gonna go well, I don't think. I don't think it's gonna go well. So thank you very much, thanks for staying late, and uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Matt, very much. Can I do? Can I just say this because no one does the theme, and I and I forgot to mention this with the dinner with Andre. I had a fact on that, but um, yeah. Elliot Smith's version of Revolution was just released. I think it's better than the original under his uh, band Heat Miser. So check that out, Revolution. Woo. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, all we are saying is it's my. This mic is not for the faint of heart, all right? You will get physically assaulted if you fuck around, all right? And that's fair game. It's the East Village. Bring it on, baby. He missed. She... Anyway, we apologize. We don't mean to make light of it. I mean, we're all toxic comedians. This is how we process our trauma.